All right, I want to start back in your childhood, growing up in a family where your dad was a professional tennis player. I mean, your great grandfather as well played professional sport. What was like that for you at a really young age? I think it was really important uh, to me as a, as, a, as a kid because the story that I always tell to everybody is that I never had toys in my house, in my room. I, I always had a, a tennis ball or a, or a soccer ball. I was playing around the house every time, 20 hours a day, driving my dad and my mother crazy. Yeah. And I grew up with a, with a ball in my, in my feet. So you were the kid basically that the lights were always broken, the picture frames were always off the wall. Um, always. So obviously tennis and football were the main sports in your household. What made you choose football over tennis? I think uh, I was good in both, but my father when I was 12 or 13 told me, hey Leo, you need to decide because I, I know you have the potential to become a professional in, in both, mm -hmm. but you need to decide. And I decided uh, uh, soccer and he was really proud. He was really proud of me. Uh, he, he, he was a tennis player, mm -hmm. but he really liked more soccer than, than tennis. Mm -hmm. So he, he was really proud of me, he was really happy, and he's been enjoying the, the, the journey with me along my, my whole family. I love that. Now, obviously competitiveness in your household. I mean, I'm sure it comes at large. So when you go back home, you have a little bit of off time, maybe over the Christmas break. Is there a tennis match going on or is there 1v1 in the backyard or what's it like with you and your dad? 100%, always, always. <laughs> Are you winning these or is it your of dad? Of course, yeah, especially tennis. <laughs> but, <laughs> but every time we, play, we try to play, um, usually tennis in our, when I have a break. Mm -hmm. And soccer, I remember going with him when I was little to a field that was near my house. And we, we were going at night because he usually works mm -hmm. in, in a day. And um, we just parked the car without the lights. He just turned on the, the lights of the car and he just threw me some crosses and I, and I held the ball like at 10, 10 p.m. at night. And it's something that I, I, I will remember forever for, for sure. All right, now let's jump to 2019. That was a huge year for you for two big tournaments, but the U20 really stuck out. It got your name in the headlines for massive clubs around the world. What was that experience like for you and getting a bronze medal in that? It was it was amazing, you know, especially the um, in January we played the South American Championship, mm -hmm. and thanks to my teammates, uh, I could I, well I was the, the top goal scorer in there. Mm -hmm. uh, also, we were the, the champions of that uh, of that tournament. Then we went to the World Cup to the under 20s in in Poland, and we conquered the the third place also, mm -hmm. uh, and it was it was amazing. Now, you speak as if you're a 30-year-old. You're only still 21. You're still such a young player. So how did you deal with that pressure of having two very successful tournaments in a year? I think uh, in my young age, I experienced a lot. And I think uh, I consider myself a, a very a mature per person. Mm -hmm. uh, also, this is uh, thanks to my, to my family, to my father and my mother that uh, have told me every time to, since I was little, to be humble, mm -hmm. to, to treat every person like they're all the same. And these type of things uh, are, uh, are the things that uh, make the difference, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, you could be the best soccer player, but if you're not a good person, it doesn't matter. Yeah. So I think that's, that's what, I, what I would like to tell one to, to, to see about me. Now your time in England, you're here on loan. We're all dying to make that a permanent. I think the fans are, the club is, Phil is, all of us selfishly on the broadcast <laughs> team are because you've added so much of your time here at Inter Miami, both on and off the pitch, because like you just alluded to, being first and foremost a good person. But what was your time like in England and what do you think really kind of changed, you had to change in your game there? I think it was, a, first of all, I was really happy. I was going to the best league in the world. Uh, being the Premier League uh, in Wolverhampton, uh, it's a huge club, great facilities. Um, they treated me uh, really well in there, but I didn't play. But it 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 did help me to to grow up as a person and mm -hmm. to grow up also as a as a player. Then I went to Portugal. I had a lot of injuries. I just played like four games maybe in the um, the whole season. I went to Switzerland. I didn't play too much. Then I came here and. I think things are, are doing well. Mm -hmm. I know that uh, I haven't achieved anything and 
I know I have to keep working to keep improving and to keep uh, helping the, the team. Now you're a very humble person, but when you were struggling through those injuries and maybe not getting that playing time at such a young age, having such a successful 2019, how did you deal with that? Did you really rely on your, your family for that or was it very, came down to you, that mental side of your, of your game? You know, it was really tough. It was a really tough time uh, being in there in Europe uh, alone. My family went uh, a little bit, but they, uh, I have sisters also, so mm -hmm. they couldn't come a lot. Uh, because my sisters had a, a school, and uh, I was um, too, yeah, too, too many. How do you say? Too, too many time alone, mm -hmm. and it was tough. And it was tough. But uh, I remember that I, um, I had like five injuries. Like I used mm -hmm. to play one game, lost like five, and this was the whole season. Yeah. I started crying in my bed, like praying. I, I pray a lot. I be, I'm a true believer, you know. Mm -hmm. And it was something really tough, but I know that everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. The thing that I that was uh, passing in that moment uh, will not be forever. Everything mm -hmm. that's going bad in your life will not last forever. And I knew that everything was going to change. I just had to keep to keep working hard. And right now I think that's that's been it's been working out yeah you know? you've taken yeah. the words right out of my mouth things yeah. haven't been bad here at all yeah. i mean you have been flying for this team and really what inter miami have been lacking for the last three years is just that out now goal scoring threat that teams look to to put two men on we really didn't have that so your time now at inter miami how do you think your confidence has changed since being here a lot a lot a lot uh, inter miami uh, the coach uh, my team, everybody in here, you, everybody in here has, I've told them to say that, has, <laughs> <laughs> has treated me really well. And being in Miami, as, as, as I say, the first interviews that I came, when I came here, uh, it's my second home. And also I'm near my family, near my friends. And it's, it's been incredible, incredible for four or five months, I think. Mm -hmm. I've been really happy in here. So we obviously know what you are producing on the pitch. What's your role off the pitch for maybe people that don't know a lot about you inside the locker room or just when you kind of leave the training ground? I think uh, I'm a professional soccer player that 20 hours uh, of the day, seven days a week. I like to work uh, every day, even if it's just a little bit, just, I'm uh, passionate about what I do. Mm -hmm. um, but also I like to be with my family, friends, go out to dinner. Uh, have fun, also be being normal, you know, be being a, a normal kid, normal person, I would mm -hmm. say. And these type of things that I didn't have in, in, in Europe, I think I'm having right now. I finally found my, uh, the things that I needed to also be good inside the pitch. Mm -hmm. And I would say the first thing is my family. I love my family and mm -hmm. they're the best thing that, that can right. happen to me. What did your family think of your Panenka on Wednesday? Because it Ooh, was they, 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 unbelievable, they, by the way. They almost cried because <laughs> they were so nervous. They, they, they told me when you hit the post, I, I, saw I was it nervous. In. I was like, please yeah. go in. <laughs> no, I think everybody, everybody. When, the, when I saw the ball hit the post, I, I think to myself, I, I, I think, like oh, now Phil is gonna it's gonna throw me off the team. But then I I saw it it went in. Yeah. I was like, Oof, now now we're still in. But it's that confidence that you touched on that maybe you lacked a little bit in Europe, and you've really come alive as a player at still such a young age. So it's great for both your growth on and off the pitch. Let's talk about a little bit of season. Big match tomorrow. Uh, what's the game plan going into it? You've had a lot of fixtures. I mean, you've played every other day it almost feels exactly. like so what's the mentality with the team at the moment yeah as you say we play this will be our sixth game in 21 days i think uh, we have felt this i think uh, our legs are a little bit heavy if we if we win we're gonna want to be in the in the spots for for the playoffs so uh, we're gonna give our, uh, our best uh, to the fans uh, stay calm because mm -hmm. we're going to to do our best in the pitch and hopefully um, I would score, hopefully, mm -hmm. hopefully. That's the that's that's idea and help the team. I love that you always put the team before yourself because we haven't even touched on the national team. Obviously, a big window coming up. World yeah. Cup just around the corner in December in Qatar, obviously. Uh, roster thoughts, if you make it, if you don't make it, what's going through your mind at the moment? Um, obviously, uh, my, my main goal is to, to be in the World Cup. Mm -hmm. I told Phil when I just arrived in here, that my main goal is to be to be there. I'm gonna work my ass off, uh, seven days a week, Love as I'd that. say. 
Um, to be there, obviously, I know that first I have to perform well in here mm -hmm. because that that will make me be in the in the World Cup, and that's uh, my my main goal to be there to represent my uh, my my country. Mm -hmm. I think it's the the best thing that a player can can achieve. Mm -hmm. Six goals one assist, seven goals in all competition. Has the manager from your national team reached out to you or said, wow, you've really changed this in your game and we're really impressed? Yeah, he came, he came here a couple of weeks ago to talk with me. Uh, he believed a lot, uh, a lot in me. And um, he told me when the first, I think uh, last year, he called me a lot to, to a national team, but I was not playing in my, in, mm -hmm. in my team. He told me, you need to find so, uh, a team that a, um, where you can play, a coach that gives you the confidence yeah. that, that, that you need to perform in the pitch because I know what you're capable of and I know a, um, what type of player you are. So you need only to play games and the rest will, will come. Well, we're all excited for you. We're all rooting for you. We want to see you obviously you. at the Thank World Cup, not only representing your country, but representing Inter Miami. Uh, I want to have a little bit of fun uh, with you. Perfect. I'm not calling it rapid fire anymore because I've been <laughs> hammered that it's not quick enough for yeah. the likings of our viewers. So Perfect. let's start off with the best dancer in Inter Miami locker room. Emerson. Really? Okay, a couple yeah. of people have said him. Yeah, yeah. Worst dancer. Worst dancer? Ooh, I would say Mota. Really? Yeah. yeah a couple yeah. of people have said him as well. Yeah. He shouldn't be a bad dancer. How He's is Brazilian, he, yeah. yeah how it's is he, strange. I feel like Brazilians cannot be bad yeah. at dancing. Um, best dressed? DeAndre. Okay, everyone says you. Yeah? No, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit humble, you know, I cannot say him. Okay, best, <laughs> uh, let's do worst dresser on the team. Worst dresser? No, Allen. Yeah. Oh, the poor kid. Yeah. He's been. That's, yeah, that's, her mother, that yeah. also to, yeah. to oh. no. He's young though, so we'll give him a little bit of time to maybe come into his his fashion sense a little bit. <laughs> um, let's do best singer. Best singer. Ooh, I would say Indiana Jones. Indy. Ooh, okay. He sings really, really nice. Yeah. Worst singer. Worst singer. Who's someone that's like nails on a chalkboard? Ah. Where you're like, just stop. Gregory, Gregory. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now you said that you love, you're, one of your favorite things to do is obviously being with your family or going out for dinners in Miami. Where's your favorite restaurant? Where do you go? My favorite restaurant, I would say, I just went yesterday to Marion. Okay. Amazing. Yeah, it's good. And also Mila. Mila is nice also. Mila, it's, it's a really like the, the fire girl that does like her stuff. Exactly. I like, no, but the food is, is yeah, the food's really amazing good. As it's well, really, yeah. really good. Yeah. I'm obviously focused not on the food, <laughs> more of the ambiance. Yeah. Um, what's your favorite part of Miami? Favorite part of Miami, I would say, I really don't know. I think every part of Miami, it's really nice. Where mm -hmm. I live, uh, it's a place uh, where all my cousins and family live. Mm -hmm. I have my, in 12 minutes, I'm in Brickell, that it, there are all my friends, all the places to eat. So I would say, yeah, Key, Key Biscayne, the place where it's my, my family. I do like Key Biscayne. Um, yeah. Worst thing about South Florida? Worst thing about South Florida, oh, it's really, really hot. Yeah. When, when I train, it's, that's the only thing that I don't like. Okay. But drivers, you think the drivers are good here? No, okay. no, no, no. They have to no. be the worst yeah, thing yeah, about yeah, South Florida. Yeah, yeah, you're right, drivers. Okay, yeah. now I want you to, so I've been working on my Spanish. I have, I might be lying when I say this, I have a tutor, which I don't. My three-year-old is basically my tutor. He's like better <laughs> at Spanish than me. So I'm gonna get you to say three different phrases to me. I'm gonna try to, break it down with what you're saying. Okay. Okay, here we go. Can it be a, qu a question? Yeah, it's a question. A question. I'm not going to answer in Spanish, I'm going to answer in English, so. Uh, ¿Quién es el mejor en el equipo de broadcast? Am I any good at broadcast? <laughs> 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 okay, well, what did you say? Who is the best in the bro broadcast Oh, me. Team? Hands yeah. down, me. 100%. No, actually, Ray Ray's number one. Yeah. And then, I'm probably five out of five. <laughs> out of all of them. Yeah. We have a really strong broadcast team, yeah. to be fair. Like, even our radio is, like, class. Thank you so much for joining <laughs> us. It, honestly, it was a pleasure. We've been trying to get you since day one, but obviously we were respecting you. You wanted to focus on your football, and your football exactly. speak for itself, and it has done just that. So best of luck tomorrow. No, thank you. Thank you very much, and I know we, we, will, we will get a, a great result tomorrow.